Let me tell you about the story of my life. After recently retiring from the Mining and Metallurgy Department at the University of Johannesburg, founder of the Stairs Project, Mr. Peter Nottendell, was attacked and severely injured by a crocodile while on holiday in Footsbreak with his family. His story, his positivity, his mental and physical resilience, and his commitment to his rehabilitation is an inspiration to his many students, colleagues, and fellow Stairs users worldwide. I've done the stairs project for seven or eight years and I'm strong both mentally and physically and I will allow myself to be saved. Things are looking good. I'm now speaking on my own. I believe I sound a little bit like Nelson Mandela. So this is my long talk to feel. A lot of people say, where do you get the strength from? And my answer is, I got it from the Stairs Project. It comes from having a commitment that you stick to and drive yourself to, both physical and mental. We had this vision many years ago that the whole of Dorenfontein campus, everybody would be committing to not using those horrible things. <laughs> See that? that place which we call the lifts, the elevators. We know on our stairs project that that's not the way to get to the top. Right again, walking your way up in life. Walking your way up in life, step by step. Three and a half months after his accident, Peter joins students on the lower floor of the University of Johannesburg campus to continue his stairs project. I'm a little bit rickety. So I might only make it one floor, although I'm going to try. Yes. Because these will be the first real stairs that I've climbed really since I saw you last year. Uh, well done for his first step 
when he achieved the seventh floor of the mining department. Well done, Peter Nottendals. This is your legacy. Thank you, sir. Yes. I don't think that I'm weaker now because I only have one leg. I don't think I'm weaker. I think it's put me in another path to grow still stronger. And that's what I'm going to do. And I've got that, that motivation largely from the STAIRS project. There's nothing these kids will ever in their lives see, I don't think, that comes close to what you have not only experienced, but actually came to share with us. Let me set the scene for what happened to me on the 6th of January this year. Well, it's a place close to where, I don't know if you know Limpopo at all, I know there's lots of people from Limpopo, where the Olifants River meets the Blyda River. Uh, we got into the river and we started walking across. The river's only this deep, but at places it gets a little bit deeper, it's not flowing fast or anything, it doesn't appear to be a danger at all. And I'm walking around the sandbank and I feel on the, on the floor, I feel the sand where I've been walking all the time. And then suddenly on this foot, I feel in the back of a crocodile. But within an instant of time, like half a second, there was a big splash. And this crocodile had my leg in its mouth. This was a crocodile which was estimated at being about three or three and a half meters long. Now you know what three and a half meters looks like. And then they saw me being thrown this side and that side. I don't know whether you've seen it on TV, how a crocodile prepares for its next supper. <laughs> so it threw me left and right. And I'm, I'm hearing, I don't want to be too gory, but I'm, you're adults, you can take it, I'm sure. But I heard the bones breaking. Actually, that grip of the crocodile is so strong. This is not something that you can just play with. And, and then I heard some shots. Pow, 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 pow. They're trying to scare the crocodile. This is the rangers who happened to be at the game, the game park maybe a hundred meters downstream. Uh, I was fighting with it, with my, my thumbs in its eyes. I don't know what made that crocodile. He literally spat me out. Maybe he didn't like the taste. <laughs> <laughs> they pulled me out and against all odds, I remember them telling me, telling you know, discussing and say, they must put a tourniquet around my leg. And I can imagine my leg was bleeding profusely. I sort of lost consciousness, consciousness uh, after that. But every now and again, I realized that there were people who were trying to, to make me survive. 
the ambulance and the paramedic arrived maybe an hour and a bit later. They, they uh, had arranged for the helicopter to airlift me from Polokwane to uh, Mill Park Hospital in Johannesburg. When I got to Mill Park Hospital in Johannesburg, uh, as I understand it, all the specialists and the, and the, um, the specialist surgeons and the plastic surgeons and the anesthetists were all ready for me and they just said, this bloke's not going to survive. But we'll give him a go. And they took me into theater and I've, I've undergone, I think it's 13 uh, surgeries of different, uh, different, uh, for different reasons. The infections were enormous. I was two weeks basically in a coma, after which I sort of woke up in a sort of a daze. I have all these pipes and things through my nose and my mouth and my throat and all this sort of stuff. Uh, and I see my family around me. My recovery, everyone has said, they cannot believe that I have recovered at such a fast rate. I was, I was in intensive care for, uh, I think, 44 days uh, with, with intensive care, wonderful care. But the people in the intensive care, they, they kept me not only alive, but with the motivation to, to go on with life. Together with my family, together with the many, many, many thoughts. I know that, I, that I've had enormous support from everybody around the world. I don't know what I've done to deserve it, but anyway, it's, it's joined our family together. Uh, for me, it's all been a part of the steps that takes us to a higher plane. And for all those people who have sent me love and best wishes, I'm sure this has made a big difference to my recovery. Because upwards is where I'm going. And I know that upwards takes effort. Right? Doesn't matter whether it's getting repairing yourself. I've been given exercises and things to do. I do them. I do them beyond what they, they want me to do. Them. That strength has largely come in these last eight years, have largely come from the stairs. It's because I've committed myself to that. Right? And I beg you all, right, as you wear the stairs shirt, that you understand it's not just a t-shirt. For me, this is not a, just a t-shirt. This is my saving grace. This is what saved me from death. Let me tell you about the story of my life. Yeah, 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 yeah.